Hello, and welcome to today's lesson. English Owl, Lesson 8. Let's have a look at our vocabulary for this lesson. Breathe. Swallow. Croak. Television. Twiddle. Drift. Medicine. Gulped. Let's take a closer look at those words. Breathe. To draw air into the lungs and let it out. Example. You breathe around 20,000 times a day. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word breathe. Swallow. To cause food to go from the mouth to the stomach. Example. The greedy boy tried to swallow all his food at once. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word swallow. Croak. To make a low, hoarse sound with the voice. Example. When frogs sing, it sounds like a croak. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word croak. Television. A set with a screen for receiving and viewing pictures. Example. He enjoyed watching television on Saturday mornings. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word television. Twiddle. To move the fingers in a circular motion. Example. I twiddle my fingers when I'm feeling nervous. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word twiddle. Drift. To be carried along by an outside force. Example. Counting sheep helped him drift off to sleep. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word drift. Medicine. A drug or other substance used to cure illness. Example. When we are feeling sick, sometimes we need to take medicine. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word medicine. Gulp. A large mouthful or swallow. Example. The young girl liked to gulp down her bottle of juice. Your turn. Make a sentence including the word gulp. Brilliant. Now, let's read our story. You can read along and keep an eye out for the words in our vocabulary list. Rory's lost his voice. Rory's friends tried to help him find his lost voice. Rory never stopped talking. Where's my football? Hello, cat. When's granny coming to stay? Guess what I did at school? From morning to evening, he talked and talked. But one night, Rory woke up with a sore throat. 
It hurt when he breathed. It hurt when he swallowed. And it hurt even more when he tried to call for his mum. In the morning, Rory stayed in bed. You're very quiet, Rory, said his mum. What's wrong? Oh, mum, he tried to say. I've got a sore throat and a sore head and I didn't sleep much. But all that came out was a croak. Oh dear, said his mum. You must have lost your voice. Stay in bed, love, and if you're not better by lunchtime, I'll call the doctor. Rory tried to sleep. But in came his friend, Mohammed. Hello, Rory, he said. Your mum says you've lost your voice. Rory nodded sadly. What shall I do? He tried to say. I'll need it for the big match. Don't worry, said Mohammed, joking. It must be around here somewhere. He looked under the bed and in the wardrobe, behind the television, and under the computer. But there was no voice, not anywhere. A little while later, in came his other friend, Angus. Mohammed tells me you've lost your voice, said Angus. You'll need it for the final. I know said Rory, but nothing came out. Angus went up, right next to him. Say that again, Rory. I know, said Rory, but still nothing came out. I can hear something, said Angus, but it's far too quiet. I'll see if I can turn the sound up. So Rory tried to talk while Angus twiddled the knob at the end of the bed. Then Rory tried to talk again while Angus twiddled the light switch on the wall. Then Rory tried a third time while Angus twiddled his friend's ear. Ow! yelled Rory, except he didn't because he couldn't. Rory was drifting off to sleep when Mags, the window cleaner, tapped on the glass. Hello, Rory, she yelled. What are you doing in bed? I've lost my voice, said Rory. I can't hear you, cried Mags. I'll have to open the window. I can't speak, said Rory. And it's too noisy out here, cried Mags. I'll come inside. I've lost my voice, said Rory. And oh, you poor boy, said Mags, understanding at last. You've lost your voice. I'll go down and I'll tell your mum. A bit later, in came Rory's mum with Dr. Thapa. Hello, Rory, said the doctor. Let's have a look then. She peered into his ears and down his throat. Bed rest and medicine, that'll do the trick. She pulled out a bottle and gave him three spoonfuls. What about my voice, Rory tried to say. And what about the big match? But he was fast asleep already. Mohammed and Angus came to the front door. We've come to watch the final with Rory, they said. I'm afraid he's fast asleep, boys, said Rory's mum. 
I think you'd better watch it somewhere else. Please, said Mohammed. He's the only one with a television in his room. We'll be as quiet as we can. Oh, all right then, said Rory's mum. But don't wake him. So they sat on the bed beside the sleeping Rory. Come on, United, yelled Mohammed. Come on, the lads, roared Angus. But Rory didn't hear a word. He was still asleep. It was very strong medicine. At last, United scored. Go! roared Mohammed and Angus at the top of their voices. Rory shot up in bed. Go! he roared. Mum came running into the room. Was that you, Rory? she asked. Have you got your voice back? Rory looked at everyone in surprise. Then he gulped and found that his throat didn't hurt any more. I'm not sure, Mum, he whispered. I'll try it out. United, his mouth said quietly. Then, United, he yelled at the top of his voice. It's back, Mum, cried Rory. My voice is back. I can breathe and I can swallow and my throat doesn't hurt and shh, Rory, said Mohammed, turning up the television. Why do you always talk so much? Maybe you should rest it for a bit longer, Rory, said his mum, just until the match is over anyway. But then United scored again. Go! The end. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Bye-bye.